it seems lately that every independent commentator and 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 news independent news person uh, uh, on YouTube and elsewhere have uh, been or uh, really it's been a really big topic uh, warning that the uh, draconian tyrannical uh, COVID restri restrictions are about to return. Now I, I however am cautiously optimistic that that is that will not be the case and that's why I'm making this this video um, and I'm just present some reasons why I believe that is the case that they, I, I, I'm doubtful um, this, despite all these uh, the warnings that are coming up in independent media and so yeah it, and I think there's 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 a long history it seems like of independent uh, indie con commentators making similar predictions that did not turn out to be true so like just just because they're good at making uh, making normative commentary about past and present states of affairs does not necess necessarily make them good prognosticators um, as a point of evidence of that I can just go back to um, one of my previous videos it was like nine months ago it's one of my better performing ones it has 214 views last my last checked it's where I said where I, the title of the video was no we will not run out of diesel fuel in two weeks um, and sure that was nine months ago and sure enough we did not run, run out of diesel fuel and it was just because of a the misinterpretation of some statistics that show that we're, we had a real tight supply of diesel fuel but that was just a that was a measure of the buffer just theoretically what would happen if um, the the, uh, the the plants uh, the, that stopped generating new diesel fuel because because they're they're all every day they're putting out more diesel fuel in these uh, uh, distillation uh, uh, plants that process petroleum crude oil and, and so they're, they're always putting them out so yeah we, that, that would only we'd only run out of diesel fuel if we if we stop producing new uh, diesel fuel every day but that's not the case it was just a tight supply and so I was very confident there that we were not going to run out of diesel um, in, in I think it was two weeks diesel fuel in two weeks but or no 25 days I guess it was I'm just looking at it now it says yeah no we're not going to run out of uh, out of diesel in 25 days yeah so that that was so apparently that was that was that it was like a record low buffer of uh, how much fuel was was uh, in reserve but yeah it was just a buffer and so that one I was very really confident of that, that I, I was correct there this one, unfortunately, I'm not as I don't have that high as high a degree of certainty that COVID restrictions will not return. But I'm 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 fairly confident um, for for some reasons for the following reasons. For uh, one, one is that we're, we're we're a lot better prepared now, and uh, the, those of us who are defenders of freedom. Uh, for for the individual like before it was like we were caught, we were caught off guard it's like what is going on here can't believe this is happening and so we we had to keep continually trying to keep up with the sophistry of the powers that be to try to pull the wool over the, our eyes and and to help take the wool off of the eyes of the normies in the general public so but now now we can respond to all of their sophistry we've already have uh, arguments and we have uh, evidence um, you know for instance the masks are well that, that's another thing you know, I gotta be real careful still about how I talk because there's still YouTube is still censoring uh, 
it's like, it's like we're back in the Middle Ages, medieval, dark ages, when there was like this uh, dictatorial church that was, in that everybody had to be very careful what they said or they could face the Inquisition. And so there were people would speak in code when they would write and speak so as to not run afoul of the church and the Inquisition. And so that's, that's basically what we have to do now. And then that they've, the main power back then was the, I think it was the, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, yeah, the Roman Catholic Church Empire. But now the, the powers that be... Um, so yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe I, don't know, I don't know if the Protestants, did they also have an Inquisition? I don't know. But either the Inquisition, I'll just say that. Um, but yeah, so that, that's why now, now I call Team YouTube, they're the ones that'll, they'll censor me. And uh, I've already have two, had two videos removed to, due to medical misinformation. And I've, uh, one is an official warning. If I get another one, it would be at least a strike. Um, so, yeah. So, so, you, so I, don't, I don't know what, what to, to what degree I can be dealt. skeptical of masks uh, in, terms, in terms of my statements here. But I have a lot of skepticism. We'll say that, to, to, to say the least. I, I believe they cause more harm than good. In, 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 in terms of their, or the, especially in terms of their effectiveness, I, they're very. I think I believe they have a very low effic efficacy against um, any virus. Because viruses are too tiny. And you know, like within, in, in, I used to work in a hospital. I know some of the staff. They would have to have, actually have to be fitted for N95 masks. The medical and N95 masks. Some of the staff would have to be, if they were going to be at any point required to wear them, they would have to be, have it specifically fitted to their face. And, uh, yeah, so, and that, so that, yeah, and so if, if they if anything works at all, it would be that N95 masks that have been specifically fitted to each person's face. Um, and also, yeah, men can't have any uh, facial hair. They have to be clean shaven too for it to be effective. And even, though, even though you had all these uh, YouTubers that they're diligently were wearing their masks during the COVID hysteria era and they had these full lockdown beards on. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it makes it completely completely worthless the masks. Um, and they have a full beard and have, having a mask on top of that. <laughs> what do they do? What do they think they're doing? This, this um, sub-microscopic particles that uh, viruses are. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's just absurd that to think that there's going to be any, it'd be any good. And also, in, in addition to that, I, I think, believe that they're, they're rather harmful. I think that they're bad for oral health, uh, masks are. And so that's, yeah, you know, and there's a lot of protections, like in terms of, there's like legal protections for workers um, for when they're Say, so order to do a task, a task that the workers, uh, the worker believes is unsafe. It could uh, lead to a, like permanent disability or, or or death. And so, yeah, there's pr there's protections in place for the workers that you could you can use to uh, if, if to use to you know so you can keep your job and not have to take a, a you know wear a mask or, or or take a vaccine there there's actually um it was like, I noticed even in the in the break room break room walls my last job there's these signs up and one of them there was that the they can't order you, the your employer cannot cannot this is Minnesota, specific to Minnesota. I suspect a lot of other states have these same uh, protections for the worker. Um, but yeah, the, the sign right there in the break room wall said, "Yeah, if you if a worker believes that a a task uh, will cause you serious b bodily harm or or death, um, 
then they, they, they can't they cannot force you or to do that job and they can't fire you for refusing to do it and so uh, yeah I'll try to find that and put it up on the screen here later on I'll, I'll, I'll look for that I think it's you know I found it like the website also and so the, the important part there is that it does not say it, you if you can provide evidence that it is unsafe the activity is unsafe it just is a matter of uh, do you believe it's unsafe that's all that's the wording there your belief so that that's all that's all that's required um it also said you can't you can't just leave the workplace but um the, the you, you still have to do something whatever whatever job the the, the may, might you know, employer might move you to uh you do just do that instead um but but the, of course they can't retaliate against you either for refusing to do a task a job that is uh do, do something in your job that is uh, could cause it, that you believe you the worker believes that it is harmful that, I mean that, that is will cause uh, I think it's something along the words of uh, so, uh, I'm not I'm not saying verbatim what it said I'm just going by memory uh, but bodily harm a serious injury or or, or or death something something like that um but yeah it does it, 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 that, that uh, notice Right, right in the in the break room, did not say anything about the, uh, the worker having to provide any justification in terms of evidence. It just has to the worker has to believe that it it, it could cause you serious injury or death. Um, so that's 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 all it requires. So I was like, what if I said, well, I believe wearing having to wear a mask could cause me serious injury or death. It, that that's well, why why wouldn't that be enough? But, enough just to say yeah, I believe that um, in order to get out of having to wear a mask and so I, I kind of did something similar in that same last job where um, yeah it, it was a job that, that required wearing masks and uh, yeah I was getting kind of tired of that I was sort, sort of following or at least at first I was fairly diligent about mask wearing and then I got Less diligent, I kind of wore it as a um, more, more a little, little bit down a lot of the time. As a as a chin guard, I'd pull it down, and and then, yeah, I've read about how you know they can it's bad for oral health. Masks are there's evidence, there's reason to believe, and so yeah, so go, going like later on, eventually they, they were like loosening it. The, my employer loosened loosened the rules. So that we we could at our at our workstation, this is like an office production. We're dealing with mortgage documents. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, so there wasn't many. There were some cubicles, but most of the job spaces were pretty low uh, walls. Um, kind of, you could still see the person just with sitting um, sitting down. You could see the other person across from you. You still had some plexiglass glass put up, but. Um, yeah, I, I was like, I was getting real tired of the masks, and I was starting to push back. But yeah, they provided a rule for a while. They had a, had a official official policy. If you're at your desk, you, at your station, workstation, you did not have to have the mask on. But if you're walking around, you had to have it on. So I'm still okay. I'd put it back on. I was walk around, and kind of wore it as a chin guard. Um, but then later on, they had the when the Omicron also known as the moronic variant came came around they they, they they removed even that exception where you, when you're at your workstation you uh, can have the mask off and then they said so they, they changed the policy so oh, you got to wear your mask even when, you, even when you're at your workstation yeah at all times you have to have a mask on because because of, of the more moronic variant I mean omicron variant um, and so it's like I, I was like oh now we that's the last straw. I'm not. I'm, I'll, I'll, what I do, what I'll, I'll do is I'll uh, wear it as not even a chin guard, but as a, like a, a scarf, a neck scarf, 
Um, so yeah, what I did is I here's the here's the guy, here's how I wore a mask. This is, I think the same one. I would like cut off the ear band in the middle, and then I, from another mask I grabbed another. I cut off all the ear band, and I tied it together like that, so it's longer, so it'd be looser, much much looser. See, see how I tied it there. Yeah, here's how I wore it at work. See, so, yeah, got my mask on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, following the policy all the, the whole time at work. I had it just like this, even though we're supposed to have it on all the time. But then, no, I got, I got my mask on. So eventually, yeah, the the, the, soup, the manager, um, he he was nice about it. And he said, "Oh, yeah, we're supposed to have our masks on now at all, all times over our nose." And I was uh, telling him, "No, I I think I said it's uh it's bad for oral health." And I was basically I refused. I just kept up mask like this, and he let it go for then for. For for now and that's I think like next the next week he 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 went like this he was like motioning like <laughs> he wanted me to put my um mask over my over my nose and I said and I just kind of shook my head not safe so I was, I was real I think that's real important is to be the calmest the most civilized the most rational person in the room um, because uh, we, we're kind of held to a there's like a double standard standard where we're, we're treated as the um, the radicals, and so we want to be seen as being as at least, the least disrupt disruptive um, to kind of go against that notion that we're a bunch of these wild radicals. Um, we're, but instead, we're the most civilized, most rational, even friendly. So yeah, no, I was I did it very calmly. I said just and quietly. I said. Uh, and, not safe. He knew why, because I told him it's it's bad for oral health. You know, I've had a lot of tooth problem, teeth problems, and I didn't want to make it any worse uh, wearing, wearing masks. So, um, yeah, yeah. So he, I think at, at some point he he asked me to move to a. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> I like my manager. You know, the one I was working there. Um, we got along great, but he just he 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 he's also was very you know wanted to follow follow what the rules were, like most managers, um, which the higher-ups have decided. So yeah, he eventually asked me to move to a station where it was, it was a little bit more isolated, and I said, I quietly went along, so okay, and I moved. Um, and so like even by just the next day, things were just back to normal. I was sitting at my, uh, like a regular spot with everybody else. I, I think what they decided is that he missed a talk to the higher-ups, uh, higher-up in management, and I think they, and he told them that I, I, I believe it's unsafe. And so they just must have, must have made a, a decision. We're just going to let it go. Uh, because, you know, I it could be partly because of that uh, state rule about um, uh, about if, you know, being able to refuse a job or work or a job that if he, doing a task that if he considers it's unsafe. And also... I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> but yeah, I wear the roll. This is the way I wear wear my mask around. I had a job. I did not get fired. Um. I did not get punished. They, even though they required mask on. No, oh, like, like, but yeah, I wore it like this. <laughs> Blatantly. But I was nice about it. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I think that they were just decided. Oh, we don't want to. You know, if they think if the employee thinks it's unsafe, it's kind of like oh well, what do we do? If they don't can't can't force the I don't, we don't want to be forcing a, a work employee worker to do something they believe sincerely believe to be unsafe, and also I think the employers are also always worried about uh, lawsuits. They're very conscientious about lawsuits, and they don't want to um, you know, only risk. Uh, you know, if you can sue anybody for anything in this country, and the the standards for you know, winning lawsuits, especially against the, the big you know the big company, that, you know most people that are in a jury, they're 
they're more likely to be the employ the employees rather than owners of a business. So you t often get a more populist vote in a jury in, uh, in 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 these lawsuit cases. So they're I think you know employers they're very on guard and they don't want to you know if 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 the afraid of uh, they don't want to. They don't want an employer, employee to come back and say, hey, I've got this harm, I believe it was caused by your requirement to, 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 to wear a mask um, or anything else. It's also, also the, of course, this also goes, goes for, uh, for vaccines. I, I believe, in, you know, especially, even more so, if anything, because of all of the, uh, the possible, you know, you're seeing all these sudden adult death syndrome and, and you know my, myocarditis and all that that, that could be vaccine related and so yeah I'm it's uh, there, there, we have all sorts of ideas now for pushing back and I don't think that there's always all sorts of ways that we could throw sand in the, into the gears in our resistance to the dictatorial powers of of the of the dictators, the, we're, we're the ways that we can resist. So now it's it's not it's, it's not like it was before we were caught we caught off guard. Now now there's all sorts of doctors and you know scientists, epidemiologists that we can refer to that are are are, are with us who who believe that the masks and the vaccines and the lockdowns and the shutdowns and the social distancing ha cause more harm than good and we can sh point to how you know how much mental illness was exacerbated by those shutdowns and social distancing you know social distancing and social isolation are the same thing we're social creatures and we need uh social interaction close to social interaction it's it's it is essential. It's much more essential than the uh, you know all of this the, the the you know processed foods at the grocery store that you're allowed to go to get and the uh, hardware at the, for remodeling your kitchen. You can go to the hardware store. You could go to the hardware store and, and get that. That was uh, much less much less essential than the. Then the social interaction that we you could get going at, out to, you know, wh whether it's like a church or a restaurant or bar, or nightclub or um, dance hall or, or or whatever that was that was all much more essential than it, all the things other uh, big box corporate retailers that were deemed essential by some people like Governor Walls and and his uh, henchman Keith Ellison those those, those were uh, yeah yeah those those big box corporate big rock box retailers they were, they were much less essential than the social interaction that people need it's that's much more essential uh, it's been you know that's that's obvious now it should be very clear how how important that is, but yeah, every, everybody's essential, and in every all the in the first world, very little is uh, devoted to just the basics of you know keeping keeping the lights on, and uh, you know that kind of hardware like the uh, water, you know, the pipes. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I mean, there is quite a bit, but still, so much of the so much in the first world is uh, dedicated to things like, say, remodeling your kitchen. You know, your kitchen's still going to work with the cave current cabinet doors. They might be outdated, but they're still going to work. They're gonna, still going to work just fine. You can open and close them. They, they keep keep your dishes in there. They're, it works. But you know, but but to these these hardware stores, they'd be selling these remodeling uh, hardware that. Is it completely unessential? It's totally unessential. Just totally decorative. Not that it, I'm not that I'm complaining or saying, "Oh, that's wrong. Or that's bad." It's, it's that 
That's what so much of the first roll is all about, is uh, uh, these goods and, and services that are not, you know, absolutely necessary to sustain life. Um, but I would believe, to a large extent, social interaction, including close social interaction, is essential um, for psychological well-being. And psychological well-being is associated with the uh, good health, which is essential for essential for life. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Social distancing, social social distancing, and social isolation are the same thing. So that that's so that's that four state. For that, that's like when the government's forcing social distancing. It's forcing social isolation, which is forcing all sorts of mental illness on the population. That is rotten. That is really mean. That is tyrannical. It is it's, it's, it's a dystopian, tyrannical dictatorship. It's forcing mental illness on the people. So, yeah, we... Yeah, there... No, so now I'm saying, yeah, if... I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're not, we're not going to go back to this COVID tyranny but I am saying if if these if they dare to try these uh, megalomaniacs that are lusting for the good old days for them where they can have power over us um, I'm not complying I know it's easy to say but I'm just saying that's what you know what I've been talking about there's all sorts of ways to resist without say risking arrest um, you can go into a store, and if they ask you to put on your mask, if there's new mask mandates, say, well, it's, there, there's uh, exceptions for, for, for health reasons, and just civilly and respectfully say, no, I, I got health problems, that'll cause health problems, so I'm, I'm, I'm exempt, and just go in uh, if they still refuse uh, to let you in, then you can let them trespass you out um, peacefully and and then complain to ownership. I guess if, there's, if it's a small business owner, then well, not a whole lot, might not be a whole lot you can do, but um, maybe but do whatever you can to, <laughs> to, in terms of complaining about it. I, that's what I would do, complain, and especially with the corporate, if a corporate uh, retailer was, were to trespass you out for not ref for refusing a mirror wear a mask and using and, and just saying it's for health reasons um then then yeah you make all sorts of complaints on social media about that so and I, I don't think they want that so I don't think they will do that I don't think they'll uh, you know keep you out of the stories they'll still be able to shop yeah I'm, I'm not even wear it as a, as, a, as a store as a scarf I'm just not going to wear one at all no matter what their mandates say, uh, I will do. Yeah, um, I don't think you're going to have to risk arrest. And you just uh, give the reason, yeah, you have, you have uh, health exemption exceptions or, or religious exemptions. Uh, and if they, uh, if some place or business, uh, whether it's a, an employer or a, or a vendor, or you're going to shop, if they refuse you and you say it's for religious reasons and they still refuse, then you can uh, say they violated your First Amendment rights um, and they're, or, or they're violating the, uh, the uh, there's a, um, I forget the, which uh, social, uh, yeah, there's, there's some, yeah, there's also, there's a federal law against the, the brand bans religious discrimination and so you just like the Civil Rights Act or something like that um, yeah that so then you can cite that Civil Rights Act whatever it takes yeah just keep make it make it so that you're more uh, more trouble than it's than it's worth uh, for the for the megalomaniacs yeah so that it's it'd be easier for them just to let you let you go about your, your your way without a mask, without a social distancing, without without a vaccine, 
and, and just leave you alone. And it's, it'd just be easier for them. But at the same time, always be civil and, and respectful and and and, uh, and and friendly, even downright friendly. But just be firm and assertive. Do not comply. Do not obey. If that were hurt, or if it were to come back, if the if the tyranny, COVID, uh, or the, the tyranny with COVID as the excuse, if it were it to come back, I think we're. I don't. Yeah, they're, I don't think they're going to have a chance against us who are insistent on now. We, we've had enough. We're, we're going to go about our t way without the masks, without the vaccines, without the social distancing, without the lockdowns. We're not going to tolerate it. And I think I, I think they know that, and I think that's why the powers that be that the, at the World Economic Forum, the UN, um, who are really running the world, I think they know that not to, not to try not to try try to pull a stunt like that again. So that that's what I wanted to have to say for now. I think I've been talking for long enough. If you're still watching and listening, thanks for watching. Mm hmm.